All right, so inequalities. Please, I'm not teaching inequalities as a topic, but I just want to borrow some ideas as it will help us in listing the elements of a set. Don't forget that. Now, remember in inequality, we say that if I have something like x is greater than 3, <coughs> which is an inequality statement, if you go to the number line, okay, remember they will tell you represent this information on a number line. And what you do is that you write the number here 3. So you say, remember, this is always the x axis on the Cartesian plane. So x is greater than 3. So if this is 3, that means this can be 4, 5, 6. Numbers here are now less than 3. So if you say x is greater than 3, the question is, what is the first number on this number line that can satisfy this inequality statement? You cannot pick 3 and substitute in place of x. At that point, you will say that 3 is greater than 3, which is not true. So the first number I will pick, please, I'm not dealing with the decimals, I'm dealing with the whole numbers. So the first number I will pick will be 4. If you put 4 here, 4 is greater than 3, which is true. 5 is greater than 3. 6 is greater than 3. So numbers from 4 till infinity will be greater than 3. Now, to represent this information on the number line, you always do something like this. You go this way. That means that from 3 to infinity, the numbers here are greater than 3, except the number itself, 3. But if I say that x is greater than or equals to 3, there are two statements here. You said greater than and equals to. If I want to draw the number line, it will be something like this. Remember, 4, 5, and so on. So, if I pick 3, put here, is 3 equals to 3? Don't forget, there are two statements, greater than or equals to. So, if I put 3, 3 is equals to 3, meaning that if I pick 3, put here, I will not be wrong. And also, if I put 4, since it is greater than, that is 4 is greater than 3. If I put 4, it's okay. If I put 3, it's okay. So, 3 is inclusive, 4, 5, and so on. That's why if I want to draw the number line, it will go this way. Then this circle here is always shaded to tell us that 3 is also inclusive in this set of numbers. But in this one, 3 is not inclusive. That's why the circle is always open. But here, 3 is inclusive. That is why the 0 is shaded. All right. Now, if I say that x is greater than 3 and x is less than 7, these are two inequality statements. If you want to put it on the number line, you put some, this is 3, 3 and 7. So I'll put 3, I'll put 7. So you said 3 is greater than, x is greater than 3. So here it will be going this way. It is greater than this way. And x is less than 7. So look at it. Here x is less than 7. Less than it is going, less than 7 it will be going this way. So I'll put it this way. Now the set of values we are interested in is the values between 3 and 7. But you just said that x is greater than 3. Is 3 inclusive? No. That means that the first number we pick will be 4. Next will be 5. Next will be 6. Because you say x is less than 7. So 6 is less than 7. That means the set of numbers will be 4, 5, and 6. These numbers in between. So 3 cannot be inclusive. And 7 cannot be inclusive. But if I say that x is greater than 3. And x is less than or equals to 7. You will agree with me that x is greater than 3. That means I will start from 4. I'll pick 5, I'll pick 6. And you said x is greater than or equals to 7, meaning that 7 is inclusive. Then that means I will shade this circle to show that 7 is inclusive. Now, if this is understood, the next thing I want to teach us is how can we combine inequality statements? two inequality statements to form one. How can we do that? Alright, 
the first thing is that you will always start with the number the smallest number so between three and seven which one is smaller three is smaller so i will start with this so if x is greater than three then i will be right to say that three is less than x if that is confusing let me use numbers to explain this five is greater than two this is true that five is greater than two then automatically i will be right to say that two is less than five which is true if five is greater than two then automatically two if you are going backward this inequality symbol will reverse that means that if i'm starting with two it means that two is less than five just like you can see two is less than five so that's what i'm saying that if x is greater than three then if i'm going this way because i'm starting with three it means that three is less than x which is what i have here that three is less than x and that x which is the same thing as this x is now less than or equals to seven so i've been able to combine these two inequality statements so in other words if five if x is greater than five and x is less than 10 then i will say that if x is greater than 5 it means that 5 is less than x and then the x in turn is less than 10 but this is where we are now and i'm you walk up to a classroom or you look at the board and you see something like this how do you read this when you see something like this on the board some student will say 3 is less than x and x is less than or equals to 7 and I will always say no because you start from the middle x to read so when you are reading you are going backward and remember going backward will reverse the inequality sign so you go to the board you see something like this, this is how you read you say that x is greater than 3 you are going backward so this will reverse x is greater than 3 and of course you can see it takes us back to what we had initially that x is greater than 3 so you say x is greater than 3 and then less than or equals to 7 so here x is greater than 5 and then less than 10 that is exactly how to read in other words the range of values here ranges from 3 to 7 but 3 is not inclusive and 7 is inclusive remember what i said earlier in the introductory part of this topic so you can agree with me if it is double like this then it will mean that x is greater than or equals to 3 meaning that 3 is inclusive and x is less than or equals to 7 meaning that 7 is also inclusive so this interpretation will also help us when we are listing the element of a set that is to say transforming set from set builders form to what we call the listed form of sets having understood this i'm just going to give us maybe three examples as we'll be transforming set from set builders form to listed form of set to make us understand 